Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Hardware News, recapping the news for the last week. This one includes some fake news and not the kind that everyone spouts when the benchmark results don't match what they wanted, but actual fake news revolving around an AMD slide. Uh, we'll also be talking about GDDR6 memory controllers for future GPUs, EK water blocks announcements, a pretty interesting Jones Bow case, one of the suppliers in the case industry who provide cases to people like Rosewill and Anides for the AI Crystal, for example. Uh, and we've got some news about Razer and a couple of sales at the end with some Metro Exodus news. Before that, this video is brought to you by Thermal Grizzly, makers of the Conductonaut liquid metal that we recently used to drop 20 degrees off of our coffee lake temperatures. Thermal Grizzly also makes traditional thermal compounds for use on top of the IHS, like Cryonaut and Hydronaut pastes. Learn more at the link below. So typically when people post the words fake news on hardware articles or videos, they're talking about when reality doesn't match their expectations. But this time it's about uh, some slides that were sent around. So if you recall about a week ago, we had a viewer question that we addressed where folks were asking what we thought of the alleged 5.1 gigahertz, 12 core Ryzen CPUs, where I basically said, sorry, that's not happening next year. It's not gonna happen for Ryzen Plus. We don't think it'll happen for Ryzen 2. It's possible, but it seems unlikely in terms of looking at reality. And then we went on to say, more realistically, it'd be pretty cool to see 4.2 to 4.3 gigahertz. That would be a nice thing to see, up to 4.5 XFR maybe, something like that. But no, the slide was for 5.1 and 12 cores. And so that slide was, believe it or not, fake. Big surprise. Uh, so that slide was in fact a faked slide and was uh, sent around the web and posted on several other hardware outlets as uh, news and rumors and things like that. So that is in fact fake, despite it being posted a lot of places, most of them have now updated their stories and things like that. And so this kind of reminds me of a time, there was a time with Carrizo, if anyone remembers that launch. With Carrizo, there was a, a GPU-Z screenshot, I believe, or, or something like that, a validation screenshot that was faked intentionally by some users on the overclock.net forum. And this was actually faked to see who would report it as fact without vetting the sources. Uh, so this was a, a sort of interesting play because I'll put a link below if you want to read the history on it. Because the screenshot actually had in it some hidden characters that if you knew what you were doing, you could, you could pull them out. You could basically uh, unhide the characters from the slide and see that it was photoshopped and not real. But if you didn't know how to do that, it might look like a legitimate slide. And so you had sites like Guru3D reporting on this some years ago. Uh, so this is kind of calling back to that era. But yeah, the 5.1 gigahertz 12 core thing, not real. Perhaps in the future, certainly it could happen. But uh, given the current position of Ryzen in the market, there are a lot of other things it can optimize on right now jumping up a whole one gigahertz while also increasing core count seems uh, sort of out of the immediate grasp of the architecture. Not to say that it couldn't do it, but just that's a big jump to have from Ryzen to Ryzen Plus. Maybe to Ryzen 2 or 3, but certainly not to Ryzen Plus, we don't think. And to 2, probably unlikely, uh, though possible. We'll leave that open for possibility. I'm not gonna say it's not gonna happen. Next one, AMD developing GDDR6 memory controllers for future GPUs. This isn't really much of a surprise, but uh, it's, it's kind of a rumor, but not really. This comes from a LinkedIn profile of an AMD employee, so not that much of a rumor, really. Uh, I believe it was removed by now. The details were that this particular employee was working on developing a GDDR6 memory controller for AMD product, and this would include future GPUs. So all the big players now pretty much have announced GDDR6 processes and uh, fabrication plans that includes Micron, SK Hynix, and Samsung all together. And there's looming widespread availability of this new memory. So no big surprise then that Nvidia and AMD would be working toward memory controllers that would integrate with GDDR6. Not so far-fetched. AMD could definitely benefit from doing something like this in the future. HBM was really sort of a necessity for Vega. It's, it's easy to say, why did they use such an expensive memory? But the reality of it is to go with GDDR5, 
you're looking at way higher power consumption for what you're getting and Polaris and later architectures like Vega are just objectively limited in their memory bandwidth, especially Vega. So they were sort of forced to play the HBM2 card, but GDDR6 could still be beneficial for future architectures or things like that. So that's what it looks like is going to happen at least at some point, uh, maybe with Navi or something. Either way, it would simplify packaging, PCB integration, help with cost, probably, uh, and prevent low yields with more exotic solutions like HBM2, interposers and packaging all on a single chip solution, or well, single interposer solution with all the chips atop it. The next one is from EK Waterblock. So EKWB continues to expand their liquid cooling kits. This one is aimed at a loop in a box business model along with their fluid gaming line. This time EK is offering the A240R kit purportedly to entice users seeking a liquid cooled RX Vega 56 or 64 GPU in conjunction with their CPU being also liquid cooled. The A240R kit will include the new EKAC Radeon Vega full coverage water block, the EK Supremacy AC CPU water block, the EK AluStream SE240 radiator, the EK Varder fans, an SPC series of PWM pump and reservoir combo, EK ACF Alu fittings, and EK DuraClear tubing with some of their cryo fuel coolant. This is all aluminum metals as previously, so don't mix and match your metals. If you're trying to expand other loops, make sure you stick with aluminum. The next one is from Toshiba, who announced their 14 terabyte PMR hard drives filled with helium. In mechanical drive news this week, Toshiba announced the MG07ACA, which is their first helium filled hard disk drive, as well as the industry's first 14 terabyte hard drive. Toshiba's new hard drive uses nine PMR platters, up to 18 heads, and advanced vibration protection and sensing. Toshiba rates the new disks for 550 terabytes of annualized workloads and 2.5 million hours MTBF with a five-year warranty. These new hard drives are aimed at cloud storage and exascale data centers, as well as other nearline applications. This next one is a case from Jonesbow. Jonesbow added their latest flagship case in the UMX series, the UMX5. The case blends steel and aluminum, as well as tempered glass panels. The interior also utilizes glass paneling, obscuring the hard drive and PSU bays, and RGB LED honeycomb adornments traverse the glass. The case offers features consistent with most ATX mid-tower cases, like 166mm CPU cooler clearance, 325mm video card clearance, support for 240 radiators, and it also ships with two 120mm fans. RGB illuminated hard drive covers are present, and the power supply, if you look closely, is missing in the photos with the full system. But looking at the bottom left, there's a power supply cable coming out of the back of the case, which is actually routed from the inside of the case above the hard drive bays. So the power supply we think is front mounted and towards the top front of the case. That's a bit different. The cable is then routed through the bottom of the case and uses an extension cord to put the plug out the back for normal access. And Jonesbow to catch everyone up. So if you haven't heard of this company, that's normal. Jonesbow is more of a supplier than anything. They actually do some pretty nice cases as far as ready built and ready purchase supply goes. They designed the Rosewell Cullinan, which you may also know as the AI Crystal by Anades. And they've designed plenty of square mini ITX boxes that are pretty recognizable. They designed the old Legacy W1 series. So this is something that you will probably see being sold by the likes of Rosewell, perhaps Anades, and anyone else in that boat of buying a ready-made supply item and then rebadging it, maybe changing the fans changing the LEDs, things like that. So this is their newest one. It kind of looks like some of those Dell systems that the uh, Threadripper or Ryzen systems that Dell was doing with the weird pseudo ventilation on the front and top that's really more of a design thing than anything. Definitely limited ventilation on it, but it looks a bit different. The power supply shroud and, uh, or lack of one, and the power supply mounting are somewhat unique in this market. So it's worth keeping an eye on. Next one, Razer and Ignition Design Labs are collaborating on a portal by Razer. So Razer partnered with Ignition Design Labs on this project. It's a Wi-Fi gaming router, 
and the new router is mesh capable, allegedly optimized for high bandwidth gaming and prioritizing gaming internet traffic. The new portal includes technologies like Wi-Fi autopilot and smart lanes, intelligent active traffic and interference avoidance, which sounds like a whole lot of marketing and more of something you'd put on a self-driving car. Either way, these are aimed at finding the newest channel and mesh nodes available and avoiding crowded, unreliable channels. The portal by Razer is currently only available at the Razer store, but it's $150 and has availability slated for first quarter 2018. How effective this will be, I don't know. Some of this type of application, like the killer networking stuff, sounds a lot better than it is in reality, so we'll see. Prioritizing gaming traffic doesn't normally do a whole lot for you. Uh, you can definitely do it, but you're sending bytes at a time here. So next one, Metro Exodus. This is more of game news, but it's important to the hardware industry. Metro has long been a mainstay in benchmarking, and that started with the original Metro 2033, followed through to Metro Last Light, and uh, Redux later than that. So Last Light we used for years. We still use it sometimes for benchmarking. These games provide a very reliable, repeatable benchmark that when they come out is stressful and they tend to remain stressful throughout the next few architectures even. And the reason it's nice is because after launch, they don't get a ton of updates. So uh, you have a really steady platform to look at comparative performance numbers as new products come out. So you don't have to retest all the old ones from previous generations. And although it ages and people stop playing it, it's still a really good platform to benchmark for that specific purpose. So Metro Exodus is the new one. This is due in fall 2018. Will come out on the Xbox One, PlayStation 4, and the PC. And it follows the usual Metro story. Uh, they've got a trailer out called the Aurora trailer, and it looks like it's gonna be a good bench title. So we're looking forward to that one. Next one here. So sales of the week to point out, Corsair's K70 Lux RGB Rapid Fire Keyboard is presently $120, marked down 50. We reviewed the original Rapid Fire Keyboard and found that the Rapid Fire switches were not bad. They're definitely something targeted at specific users though. So if you know that you want that kind of switch, it's on sale, it might be worth looking into. But they are pretty sensitive compared to some other switch types out there. So make sure you actually want that kind of switch because it's a bit different than what you might be used to on something that's got a more forceful requirement to push the, the to actuate the button. The next one, the Z370 Aorus Gaming 5 is marked down to 150 after rebates and sales. I'll link to that in the description below along with the others. There's a decent mid-range board for the Z370 in that one if you care about looks and RGB. It doesn't have the greatest heat sink in the world. Put a fan on it, it'll be okay. And then on the topic of Gigabyte, there's also the Gaming K7, which is still marked down to $160 right now from the usual price of $110. This was Buildzoid's primary choice in our best overclocking motherboards for AM4 Roundup because it filled both the price and the function targets pretty well. And at $160, that is doubly true. So we can definitely support that board for AM4 users. Uh, that price is pretty good right now. But that's all for this one. As always, you can subscribe for more. We have some pretty cool content coming up the next few days. Depending on when this goes live, there might even be one within 12 hours or so. So make sure you subscribe. You want to want to miss it. You can go to store.gamersnexus.net to pick up a shirt like this one or go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus to help us out directly. Thank you for watching. I'll see you all next time.